So hi there everyone, we're now on our next video in statistics and here we're going to discuss a little bit about this, the measure of substantial redundancy. Um, I will um, emphasize here on the calculations on, on how to do or, or how to use Excel in this video. So we're going to start with the introduction with the measure of substantial redundancy or location or um, in short they're also called the averages. So a measure of central tendency or location is a representative value of the data set and it is the value around which most of the data points are found. So in short, that's the average. So let's start with the arithmetic mean. So we have here the definitions. It's quite a lot. Um, let's just focus here in the population mean. We can see that we're using the symbol mu okay, instead of the x bar. okay, And we're making use of the capital N here as our denominator instead of the small n, which is the sample. So this is our population size, this is our sample size. So let's jump into it. You can pause the video and read um, a lot about these, these um, definitions here of the arithmetic mean, but let's jump here in example number one. So example number one tells us that during a particular summer, the eight salespeople in an appliance store sold the following number of central air conditioning units. So we have 8, 11, 5, 14, 8, 11, 16, and 11. So considering this month as the statistical population of interest, the mean number of units sold is making use of this formula. So we have um, the sum of x sub 1, x sub, x sub i, which, sum, which starts from x sub 1 up until x sub 8, since there are 8 of them all over the population size. So we have 84 over 8, which is 1005. Actually, 84, what, how do we get 84? We just add up all these numbers, okay, and then divide it by the number of how many are they, which is 8. Then the answer is 10.5 central air conditioning units Okay, um, this month. So we can make use of Excel in answering that with much ease. So we can see that we have 8, 11. Maybe we can use, use that and write that in um, downward, downward to 8, 11, 5. We have 14, 8, 11. 1611. How many we have? Do we have eight? Well, pretty much we have eight entries in which represents this one. So how do we get the mean here? Maybe you would want to write that mean. How do we get the mean? So it just equals when we write the word average. And um, actually, um, Excel will give you the suggestion to use this average um, function here. Just click tab. And then what you'll do is what is given here is says you'll need to input the numbers in which the range, the data range um, is concerned. So I'm going to input all of this. Um, click the close, close that with the closing parenthesis and hit enter. What you will, what it, what will it give, what will, what it will give me rather is 10.5, which is equal to this. Okay, so that's how we simply get the um, measure of central redundancy. So we use the function equals average. Okay, um, I have some explanation here why it is make, why it is why are why we're using mu so because we're given statistical population and such. So this handout is taken again from um, Dr. Sweetrose analysis. Okay, so we have also one more example um, for the weighted mean and there for the weighted mean. So when you say weighted mean, so it has some weight, okay, or seldom called the weighted average. So for instance, here in example two. See yourselves in example two. Um, in a multi-product company, the profit margin for the company's four product lines during the first fiscal year were for line A, we have 4.2%, line B, we have 5.5%, line C is 7.4%, and line D is 10.1%. So the unweighted mean, that is the arithmetic mean, the direct mean of the profit margin is 6.8%. Um, so that's simply getting the the arithmetic mean. So how do we do that? Let's give this as an as another example number two. So we have 4.2%. So our first data, 5.5%. Looking here, 7.4%. Uh, then we have 10.1%. So how do we get the average? Again, we need the, the mean here, and then we'll use the the average. If you have to see, if you have this actually, when you when you just click. AVE, so you can see the, the most recent use is average. You can click the tab in order for it to be faster. So we need to highlight all our data as far as our mean is concerned. So we'll close that with a close parenthesis and we'll hit enter. And that, that will give us 6.8. So since these are all in percent, so we will assume this is also in, in percent. So we have 6.80, or if you want in two decimal places, 6.80%. 
So that's how we get our mean. Now notice here, um, we have some weighted uh, sales in Philippine pesos. So assuming the sales in the following table are not equal, for example, the sales are not equal, we're given only the, 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 the percentages, the profit margin. Okay, but how about if the sales are not equal? So um, for instance, this one. So how do we do this? Um, let, let's have this as our product line. Um, let's make a table for this. Let's insert. Okay, let's call this the product line. Next line will be the, oh no, rather, this is the profit margin. Okay, next is our sales, which our sales have, have given, which our sales um, have this different, different values. We have 30,000, we have 20,000, we have, um, sorry, that's 30 million rather. I just need to add three more zeros there. Down below is 20 million. We have also 5 million and 3 million. So what do we need to do here? Um, let's just paste it here. Okay, what do we need to do here is that we need to get first the weighted the weight of each of this profit margin um, to its particular sale. So to get its weighted uh, weighted um, value, we'll call it a WX. So that will be um, to get its weighted value, um, we need to get these the the product of the profit margin times its sales. Okay, so again, A17, which is the, this blue cell, times B17, which is this red cell. Hit enter, and then let it be copied all throughout. So you can, you know, control C, control V, control, um, control C, control V, or you can just drag this downward. Okay, pretty much that, that's our answer there. You can also get this. We need also to get the sum rather. So we need to get this, the, the sum of these, sum. Okay, open parenthesis, just highlight all the data set, close parenthesis and hit enter. You also need to get the sum here, so equals sum, open parenthesis, highlight this one, close parenthesis, and hit enter. So to get the weighted, weighted mean, so we need to get the, um, the weighted values of our profit margins divided by the total sales. So how do we get that? This is equal to your total here divided by, uh, this is the total weighted profit margin divided by the, the, the total sales. That will give us um, 5.22 or I think this should be 5.23. Um, 5.23. Okay, so that's how we do our weighted mean in, in Excel. I think you just, I, my table is not that, um, not that complete, so um, let's put some, oops, sorry, should be here. Just put some space to, to, to determine that this is a table. So if you want, you can, you may want to put some borders there for it to be really like a table. Okay, so that's how you get it. Okay, that's how you get it. So just, or just some, some remark here, the way it means is used in computing your final grades actually when the number of units of the subjects are not equal so you have some subjects which are only three units we have some subjects which are five units so each grade is multiplied by the number of units of the subject and the sum of the grades which is grades times the number of units is divided by the total number of units taken to get your um, gpa your your um your gpa in your transcript i forgot the meaning of gpa anyways that's how you get your gpa um let's go to the median so the median is the middle, okay, the middle, the middle most, um, get, getting the middle most value in our, in our data. So we have again, the mu tilde, tilde for the, for the population median, we have the sample median as the X tilde. So X bar is the, is the sample mean. So how do we get our median? So going back in example one, how do we get the median here? So let's just give some space, median. Um, actually, Excel has this part, this tool in order to get the median. What you need, simply need to do is just click equals and type median. There you go. Hit tab. Um, highlight your your data set. Hit the close parenthesis and hit enter. Uh, it will give you the median, which is equal to this, which is which is um, pretty much the same in our handout, which is 11. 
Okay? So just take note, we have some arithmetic going on in our median, which we don't really need to think about when we use the Excel. So when you do the manual, since our, our N is 8, so we don't have the middlemost value, the middlemost is, is between the, the fourth and the fifth um, data sets the, or, or data. So um, we need to add them and get the mean, or rather get the mean of, of the two middle, middle values. So since we are using Excel, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's have here, for example, number four, the reaction times for random for a random sample of nine subjects to a stimulant were recorded as. So let's let's do this one. This is your example three, right? Sure, let's write it here. So for example four, let's just write the value. So we have two point five, two point five starting here. Then what we have is uh three point six, we have three point one. We have 4.3, we have 2.9, uh, 2.3, uh, 2.6, am I lost? 2.6. We have 4.1, we have 3.4. Isn't that 9? So we have 2, 4, 6, 8. Yeah, that's 9 pretty much. So how do we get the median? Um, let's scroll down. Um, median equals median again. Tab. Highlight your data values and then close parenthesis and hit equals or hit enter rather so we have 3.1 which is our pretty much our answer okay so there are some notes there that um, one can read okay let's go back here in example one um, so we have some simple recall here so during the particular summer month the eight salesperson again we have the mean which is 10.5 and we have our median as 11 going back in this example so mean is 10.5 our median is 11. um if we're going to write a dot plot for that or, or plot a dot plot so this is what it's going to look like so the mean and the median values would be considered to be good representatives of the data set since they are located in the center of the distribution so we have 10.5 is over here and 11 is there so we call something an outlier if it is um, really an extreme value which deviates from our score. So example, if 16 is not 16 and it's 160, we call that 160 is an outlier. Okay. And notice that what the result, if we're going to make, um, make 16 160, so just for example, let's just make this 160 here. Okay, the mean became 28.5. Pretty much in manual calculations, it becomes like that. But the median is 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 um, still the same. Okay, so the the median remains the same while the while the mean is affected by that outlier. So the the value of the mean is affected if there are extreme scores in the distribution. That the, those are outliers. So the mean is pretty much sensitive to outliers. It cannot be used to represent distribution if the shape is skewed. That is why one condition for for its use as a representative value is that the, the shape must be symmetric. It should be symmetrical. Okay, so on the other hand, the median has not changed because the, the only the middle value um, is the one being taken. So it doesn't really care about the extreme values. Okay, that is for the median. Now for the mode, how do we get the mode? We get the mode by um, just you know inspecting what is what is the, the 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 score that occurs the most or some say that it's the most it's the pop most popular um, most popular um, value for that distribution because it's the one that that um, that appears the most so for instance let's go back to example one so this is still example one how do you get the mode if you want to get the mode let's have some space here let's, don't forget this is example five how do we get the mode? Just click equals and then type mode. Okay, pretty much. Oops, sorry. Type mode. I think we'll use this one. Mode. And then um, highlight the things here. Um, close parenthesis, hit enter. What you'll have, get back is 11, which is pretty much this correct answer. Okay. So for example, six, um, react, going back to the reaction time and in a example, Four, so let's put the mode. Let's get the mode here. So equals mode. Um, highlight the data set. Close parenthesis, and then what we'll have is what's the mode? There's no mode. Okay, since all the values occur once. So notice that all the values occur once here. There is no mode. Okay, if we're going to look at this, um, 
the mode is not applicable because they have the same frequency. Then the distribution has no mode. That's why seldom we say that um, that the mode does not exist. So we don't say that the mode is zero because when you say that the mode is zero, you're saying that the most the data which the score which occurs the most is zero. So we don't say that. We just say that the most the mode rather does not exist. Okay. Um. Lastly, let's put on the relationship between the mean and the median. Um, going back here, how can we say analytically without drawing the graph if the distribution is symmetric? If it is symmetric, if the mean and median are equal or the same, okay? So if we get a mean and a median which is which are equal, meaning um, they are symmetric. So for instance, let's go here in example number four. Take note, this is example six. Uh, let's just try to get the mean here. So for instance, let's just use the average and then highlight all the data sets here. Then hit enter. So we can see the 3.2 and 3.1. So meaning the mean and the median are not the same. Hence, it's not symmetric. This example 4 is not symmetric. So that is, since the, the, the mean is greater than the median, the, that is positively skewed. So the, the distribution is positively skewed. Okay. Now going back here in example one, let's make this 16 again. Okay, notice the mean is less than the median. This is an example of a negatively skewed distribution when the mean is less than the median. Okay, so analytically we can know the shape of, of the distribution without even um, drawing the graph. So remember that these are the shapes of the distribution that we talked about in the last module. Okay, so pretty much that's it for our um, exercise, our examples in using Excel. Um, the next parts here of our module talks about the 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 uh, some some exercises. Um, we're going to talk about that um, further in the next video. I'm going to talk about the introduction to variability and how to use again Excel in in uh, solving these. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something from this. Um, if if there are some confusions, so better um, rewind and review this video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you would like and subscribe. So thank you very much.